All right, guys, let's check out these Parnas watches, if I'm even saying that right. I This is my first time looking at these. Um, I mean, I've had these in for like a week or two now. Uh, Danny, a, a good uh, viewer of the channel, lent in these and that Timex Q uh, a little while ago. And uh, hopefully I'll be talking to Danny some more and he's got some really cool watches that he also wants to lend in soon as well. But um, he heard that I had not checked out a Parnas before and he's like, well, Rob, I have a couple. Let me send them over to you so you can check them out firsthand because it's hard to talk about some of this stuff when you haven't actually handled them. So um, I think the GMT one's pretty going to be a pretty standard case. It's, you know, kind of... Uh, the same as like a sub or whatever. So it's gonna be a 40 mil case. The Daytona style one, I'm not really sure the measurement sizes, so I was gonna go over those with you real quick before we get to talking about uh, some of the other details. So uh, if I can snag a measurement here, this guy, it's hard to do because you got those crown pushers and everything, but um, let's just measure the, let's just measure the uh, saf or ceramic bezel. So it's pretty small, like just over 38 mil. Um, it's a pretty small watch. I don't know what the actual size of Daytonas are, but, uh, 46, just over 46 and a half, uh, lug to lug. The thickness, now this one has a quartz movement in it, but the thickness is 13.4. The lug width, or the, yeah, lug width is going to be a 20, and the bracelet tapers down to a really nice 16. So, size-wise, this thing is uh, much smaller than I envisioned, so I honestly don't know the size of an a real Daytona. If this is how big they are, then uh, I guess it's spot on. I thought they were bigger, but what do I know? Um, Non-screw down crown for the uh, time adjustment and everything, but you do have screw down pushers, which was kind of a weird combo. So um, you can get that chronograph hand going and it has a um, tick sweep sort of thing. Uh, and you know, for resetting and everything, you're going to do that here with this guy. But Really cool looking color combo with the white and the black. You have a, a legitimate um, ceramic bezel on this guy. Sapphire crystal. You can see pretty good details. Nice applied indices. Really nice handset there. And we'll check the loom on all this stuff too when we're done. But pretty good case finishing. Pretty sterile back. Has the uh, Rolex style case back there. But uh, case shapes and everything like that, very similar to the name brands that they are copying or homaging or whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, I did take a quick look over at their website. Um, I'm not going to put a link in the description just because I don't want to. Um, but if you want to look them up, go for it. And they have many, many watches, like an insane amount of watches in their catalog and when I was looking at the prices of both this one and the GMT, it looked like they're about $144 if you buy directly on their website, but there's like a 20% off discount if you buy two or more items. So the, the prices are crazy low. Now, Danny that lent these in said that he paid around $80 each for these. I think that's an insane value, $80, to get the look and feel of maybe some watches that are just straight up unattainable for you. Um, and you know, they're not junk guys. They're pretty well built. I'm so, you know, you can, uh, argue however you want with on the topic. And I'm not here to do that. If you want to do that on the comments, you know, let it fly. Just don't be doing any swearing or anything. And I'll leave the comment. I will leave the comment as long as it's clean. Uh, bracelet seems like it's pretty good construction. I didn't pay attention. Yeah, these are screw links. I did not pull any links out. You can see uh, it's going to be a, you know, you're going to have to watch the quality control on these. Um, when you get them in, you know, do an inspection on them and double check everything because, I mean, they're cheap watches, guys. So the quality control is just not going to um, be there as far as if you're going to have to mess with them or not. You know what I mean? Screws are going to back out. So you, you know that going into it. So the first thing you want to do is probably take them all out, put a little purple Loctite on them, put them back in so you know they're going to be good. You know, check the uh, movement and everything like that. Um, 
interesting clasp on this. It's actually all uh, milled out, and it's even got some uh, metal work there. Um, double pushers. It's kind of a nice clasp. I don't see this clasp used anywhere else. It's kind of nice, other than it doesn't fold all the way over, but I don't really care about that. It even has three micro adjust and like a little easy link type system here that works. So, I don't know, it's pretty pretty impressive for if Danny really got these for $80, even at the $144 price tag that I had seen on their site. Um, I'll see if I can put this thing on. It's not sized, I don't know, I don't think Danny wears them on the bracelet. But you can see that, uh, whatever it is, like 30, almost 39 millimeter on my uh, seven and a quarter wrist like wear is great i think it's a really good color combo and geez dirt cheap dirt cheap so let's take a look at the uh, gmt model here uh, like i said this is quartz it says it's a japanese movement i don't know if it's a knockoff of the seiko mecha quartz or if it's just volume purchased and they get them so cheap they use them anyway but so i'm not really sure on that one but and i didn't open these out because these like i said these aren't my watches so um Let's see if I can get a good measurement here. So that's at the bezel. If you measure it on the case, yeah, it's just over four, like 40 and a half ish. Um, the lug to lug, like 47 and a half. It's a 20 mil and it tapers down on this Jubilee down to 16. So really good measurements there as well. Um, I didn't give you a thickness, did I? This one is gonna be 13.4. And a flat sapphire crystal with a date magnifier, and the date magnifier is pretty good. And of course, this one is a GMT or a 24 hour keep. The bezel is a, um, it only rotates one direction. So if you push down a little bit and turn it, the uh, bezel action is okay. If you turn it without pushing it down, it sounds pretty bad. So if you push down and turn it, which a lot of bezels are designed that way. It's, it's okay. Um, there's really, I mean, there's a little bit of play in it. It's, but again, guys, this was like $80, Danny said. Um, or, or if you even paid the full price of $144, which I'm sure you can do cheaper. Same style clasp, nice Jubilee bracelet. Again, screw links. Um, probably very much like maybe a strap code type Jubilee. It's not like super high quality, but it's definitely going to work. Uh, screw down crown. I'm not sure on the water resistance on this guy at all, but it has a nice pop Even fully extended. There's like No crown wobble. You're gonna be able to set the time there. I believe somebody had posted up um, There's a couple of videos online About these guys. So I think it's a movement called a DG 3804. It's probably some sort of Asian type movement um, so in that position it does actually wind, so it is a wind and a hack. And then in the first position, you're going to get your date change. And then you're going to get your GMT hand moving forward. But it doesn't click like most um, entry-level GMTs. It just moves wherever you want it to go, and then you just stop. It's a, a little bit different design, so I'm not really sure how that uh, how accurate all that will be. But... You can see on this guy, again, pretty decent details, nice, well, I just smudged it all up, hold on a second. You know, nice applied indices, uh, decent handset, pretty pretty inky black uh, background. You can see you have like almost a powdery blue type GMT hand, and then the GMT just above the automatic is almost in like a mint green type color. And of course, their brand logo across the top, Parnas. And this does also have a black and blue uh, ceramic insert. So, signed crown, sterile case back. I don't know, guys. They're I mean, they're crazy and expensive. So, whatever your thoughts on the whole uh, situation, but they have. I don't think I can even get this one. This this bracelet's sized a little bit small for me. I don't know that I can even get it on. Oh, I almost have it. I'll try. Okay. Woo. I'm going to have claustrophobic here in a minute. Wrist curl. So you can see, I mean, it wears great on my wrist. So if you're looking for a cheap knock around, knock around watch that you don't want to worry about, then maybe a Parnas is going to work for you. You know, they have like 
a bunch of different. They have like the Patek looks, they or Patek. They have uh, IWC. They have even like an Omega type one. A bunch of different Rolex style watches. Um, and they're either, as far as I can tell, they're either sterile or they're branded as Parnas. So I don't know. They're not making, as far as I can tell, they're not making replicas. But uh, whatever you constitute as a replica or a copy or a homage, whatever your thoughts on that process is, um, whatever, chime off down in the comments. Like I said, just keep it clean. But uh, big thanks to Danny for lending these in. I'm going to close you out with a loom shot. And you guys can make your own judgment. The loom is, well, I mean, there is loom, but it's not consistent and it's not good. So that would be par for course with the rest of the watch. Yes, it is a watch. Yes, it will work. Yes, it is affordable. Yes, it does look like other watches. Um, and I think you could wear it. But, you know, is it a great watch? No. It is a $140 to $80 watch. So, I mean, what did you really expect? Um, they're, I think they're better than their price suggest, but um, you're not getting, it's not like the answer, if you will, you know what I mean? So, all right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next vid.